We call that solving a right triangle means finding all the lengths of the sides and all the measures of the angles from partial information. The law of cosines is a tool that can help us solve triangles that are not necessarily right triangles. Recall that the Pythagorean theorem says that for a right triangle, like this one, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. I like to think of the law of cosines as a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem to triangles that are not necessarily right triangles. Loosely speaking, the law of cosines says that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared plus a correction factor, where the correction factor depends on the size of the angle that's opposite size c. In this first triangle on the left, the angle opposite to side c is a right angle. So we know that c squared is equal to exactly a squared plus b squared. But in the next triangle, the angle opposite to side C prime is a little bit less than a right angle. So this side C prime should be a little shorter than A squared plus B squared. I'll write C prime squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus a bit. In this third triangle, since the angle opposite to side C double prime is a little bit bigger than 90 degrees, this side length should be a little bit bigger than A squared plus B squared. So I'll write it as A squared plus B squared plus a little bit. The law of cosines says exactly what this little correction factor is. It says that for any triangle with sides A, B, and C and angle capital C opposite to side C, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2ab cosine of angle C. Notice that if the angle C is less than 90 degrees, cosine of C is going to be a positive number. And so we'll be subtracting a positive quantity, just like we saw in the picture above. If, however, angle C is bigger than 90 degrees, then cosine of C is negative. So by subtracting 2ab cosine c, we're actually adding a little bit, and we get a longer side, as in this picture. When labeling a triangle, the convention is to use lowercase letters for the side lengths and uppercase letters for the angles, and to put angle A opposite side A, and so on. When we wrote the law of cosines on the previous page, we wrote c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. But it doesn't matter which side we call a, which side we call b, and which side that we call c. All that matters is that this angle is opposite to this side and between these two sides. So we could have just as easily written a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 b c cosine a, or b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2 a c cosine b. We can use whichever of these three forms is most convenient for the problem at hand. Let's use the law of cosines to find the side lengths and angles of this triangle. By convention, I'm going to call the side opposite angle b side little b, and the side opposite angle a, side little a. Since we know two side lengths and the angle between them, we have all the information on the right side of the law of cosines. So I'll plug that in and use a calculator in degree mode to find that c squared equals 44.44. Taking the square root, I get that c equals 6.67. Next, I'll use the law of cosines to find the angle b. I'll need to use a version of the law of cosines that mentions cosine of angle b here. So it'll need to mention side length little b here. So that'll be the form b squared on the left. 
I'll get a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b on the right. I'll plug in values for all my side lengths. And now I can solve for cosine b by subtracting 8 squared and 6.67 squared from both sides, and now dividing both sides by negative 2 times 8 times 6.67. Using a calculator, this gives me that cosine of b is equal to negative 0.1172. The negative value of cosine indicates that my angle b must be greater than 90 degrees, which agrees with the picture. Next, I can take cosine inverse of both sides to get that b is equal to cosine inverse of negative 0.1172, which works out to 96.73 degrees. The last thing I have to do is solve for angle A. I could use the law of cosines again and work it out just like I did here for angle B, but a simpler method is to just use the fact that the sum of the three angles is 180 degrees. So A must be 180 degrees minus 37 degrees minus 96.73 degrees. This works out to 46.27 degrees. In the previous example, we were given two sides and the angle between them. In this angle, we're given instead three side lengths, and we need to find all three angles. Although there are a lot of computations involved, the ideas are the same as in the previous problem. To find angle capital C, we need the form of the law of cosines that has cosine of capital C on the right side. To find capital B, we need to use the form of the law of cosines that has cosine of b on the right side and little b on the left side. So it'll be b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b. And to find angle A, we need little a squared on the left side so that we'll get cosine of angle A on the right side. For each of these three equations, I'll plug in the side lengths, solve for the cosine of the angle, and use inverse cosine to find my angles. Notice that my three angles, 60 degrees, 87.79 degrees, and 32.20 degrees add up to almost exactly 180 degrees. It's just a tiny bit off due to round off error. In fact, I could have saved myself some work by just finding the measure of angle C and the measure of angle B, for example, and then subtracting their sum from 180 degrees to get angle A. In this video, we stated the law of cosines and used it to solve some triangles. The law of cosines can be thought of as the Pythagorean theorem with an adjustment factor to account for triangles that aren't right triangles.